again, and welcome to another episode of Friends, Facts, and Fiction. As always, this podcast is made possible by our local convenience stores, the misappropriation of history, and you. And now to your hosts, Justin Hammonds, Brant Bramlett, and Drew Shellnut. What's up? What's happening, world? This is a podcast called Friends, Facts, and Fiction, and we're back. Season six, more shit in the mix. Episode five, I believe. Sounds right to me. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I think this is all about cereal. But anyway, um, I'm Justin Hammonds. I'm looking at my boy Drew Shonen. <laughs> <laughs> my boy Grant Bramlett. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, yeah, we're back in the building, man. Uh, you know, we got the we got the IV slow drip uh, version of episodes coming out because uh, life is life in right now. So, uh, you know, expect an episode like every other week. Every two weeks, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not who fucking knows. Yeah, it's, it's not a well oiled machine right yeah. now. Uh, you know, life be life and you know, people be people and life and pretty hard, man. Yeah. Uh huh. I am liking us and all of our uh, Alabama swag. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it is football season again. It yeah. is football season, as you all listeners know by now. If you've been listening for a while, um, we're all Bama fans. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry if you because if we're you allowed to be. Yeah, I will <laughs> say we went to school there. So we I mean, went to school there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're not bandwagoners. It's, it's, it's been lifer since you know the days of. Look, I was going to like Mike those football Fisher. games when Mike Gene Fisher Stallins. and Gene Stallings <laughs> and Mike fucking Shula Mike were coaching Shula, there. Man. Yeah, Jeez. God, that sucked. Yeah, anyway. and it was rough. Yeah, my cousin played for Bear Bryant, bro. So I don't want to hear anything. Exactly, <laughs> I don't want to hear anything. Now I will say though. Uh, uh, is this the first time in like ten years that we're ranked thirteenth? This is the first. It's been a minute, bro. This is I mean, the, seriously, the first time since the year that Alabama got beat by LSU and then came back and beat LSU. Because when we got beat was by LSU, Saban's we got dropped down to like twelve year? or thirteen. Yeah. When was that? that? Was a while ago though. That, right? That's when. That's when they Shit, couldn't that was pass about a decade. Line. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. It was yeah. a Fucking decade ago. Yeah. It's yeah. about a decade ago. Jesus. And that Christ. was that was uh, LSU was only good because Saban recruited all those players. Yep. Yeah. Roll damn yeah. tide. Oh, no, anyway. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 He That's built the team and then left. And, yeah. and then they won Miami. a national championship. Yeah, he, tried to coach, <laughs> he tried to coach uh tried to coach Miami Dolphins. He tried. And that failed miserably. Well, yeah, that's the reason why he's not enjoying what he's doing right now. And that's a you can see it on his face is that like everything that's going on with the NIL and everything like Thank that. Thank you. Is, I was trying to talk about this the he other can't, night. He can't he doesn't want to coach a bunch of prima donnas that don't listen. Yeah, that are in yes. it for the money. He right. wants to build you as a not just a person, but a player. Yeah. So, like, obviously, all the coaches want to build you as a player. He's trying to get you to the next level to where if football fucks you up, to where you can't do anything with it. Yeah, you have something to stand on. And these Your motherfuckers, fucking morals, this your character. Al- the University yes. of Alabama is n- no longer a tradition other than a business transaction. Yeah, I mean, bro, and- it's a stepping stone. You can go. You can come here, never play. And say that you are at the University of Alabama and have a pick of your litter through the transfer portal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it's, it. It's bothering it's me, stone, man. Bro. This is this is turning it's, into like the fucking of, NBA. It's like, got a lot of uh, it's got a lot of things we need to tweak in the NIL. But I mean, the kids do deserve a little pay. I agree. I mean, they, I mean, they, they deserve the, the university is making hell of bread off these kids. Right. But it is a situation where it's like it's fucking. Bro, if, you, psyches, if you're making though. if you're making as much as the coach is making. <laughs> I just want to know how many, of wild, you, how many of you people out That's there, like, I'm pretty sure 90% of you guys are not Alabama fans, but if you are, email us. If you bought the Jalen Milrow uh, NIL t-shirt before the Texas game, which was a picture of him running the football, and it said Milrow Magic. Now, if you bought that, kind of kudos, but I want to slap you in the dick. So, <laughs> um, because we, <laughs> we, we lost. Yeah. Handily, yeah. yeah. Um, no, so. no, do not wear that shirt the rest of the season, please. Uh, I, superstition. Look, I bought real. a new shirt. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I pulled, hate the Milro uh, Magic shirt. I pulled out the championship shirt that I wore during the Georgia game. Nice, nice, and, nice, uh, nice. Devontae Smith got the. Yeah. I, like, I got to pull out the old shit. Yeah, I got to get back to the roots. I like boy. my Hawaiian style shirts, and so <laughs> I got me one that's just a whole bunch of old logos and shit. Yeah, I dope. like mine. Mine is is yeah. like uh, trying to bring it back to. To the tradition, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. What I mean, yeah, yeah. old school see, Alabama. Mine is for, and I see, for like, that's my see, favorite logo. Mine's for that's like, on my truck. You see, right there. Mine's for like the dyslexic God people, damn, so or the. <laughs> yeah, what's <laughs> on my <laughs> truck we, right we gotta, there? We got to tell you what, motherfucker. We, yeah, we got it. We got a real Jesus. Southern boy opening to this episode. <laughs> uh, well, mine is for those who can't read. <laughs> 
Because it says Allah, Allah and then Bama, Bama. it helps yeah. you out. So yeah, yeah it's like a spell. Sound it out. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, Bama, which is good for, for me uh, because I'm actually from Tuscaloosa, so B- I need Bama's, that sometimes. Bama's an acronym for a beat a motherfucker ass. So yeah, anyway, go. football season has started. <laughs> we're here. We're we're in it. Uh, be we're Bama. big fo- we're b- <laughs> be, Alabama. Be, be a motherfucker <laughs> ass. Yeah, B A M A. Anyway, um, yeah, um, we're back. And uh, obviously, uh, we're it's we're currently this on Saturday. It's football day. Yeah, so yeah. Football's gotta, on the brain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but hope y'all are doing well out there. Hope everybody's doing good, enjoying the the beginnings of fall. You know, it's in the air, even though it's still eighty five, ninety degrees in Tennessee. And it's gonna be for the next few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but fall is in the air. Yeah. If you uh, actually have fall weather, I applaud you. Congratulations. We're gonna get that in December, probably. Um, Hopefully. But, um, but yeah, man, we're back. And uh, there's apparently only like three areas in the United States. I was reading an article that was saying that like aren't affected by climate change right now. But they're also like like you know places that people could possibly move to. Um, but tell, tell us off air. I don't want to. I don't know. There there are also places that you would not want to move to. Oh damn, never mind. Yeah, then like I'll, I'll give oh, you I'll give you a hint on one Detroit. But nice. um, nice. yeah. I wouldn't. I don't know. Detroit's there. pretty cool. Nah, Detroit. You is, can't drink the water. Detroit is getting <laughs> so. There's that. <laughs> yeah. it, it was down for a minute, but Detroit is getting cooler. For it, sure. is, it, so, it is. So that's how all my people in the D, man. Yeah. A little homie moved in, opened a bar. Actually, I forget his name. Old, old shouts out to Tenacious D. I missed that show name, this last bro. week too. Damn uh, it! I know. I know. Fuck. Homie moved up there, opened a bar, and I want to shout out the bar, but I can't. Anyway. Bad shout out, but there's a bar in Detroit you should go to that's owned by one of my homies. So, so just walk around and ask if you know Justin Hammonds. You know the thing. You know the thing with the stuff. The thing with the stuff. The stuff with the thing. Yeah, the man. thing. The stuff there's also some food yeah. there. It's a restaurant. Yeah. It's called. Um, I don't know. Just get a hot dog. Yeah, just go get some I food. think that's what it's called. There's some food up there too. Go eat some of that. Um, Damn, anyway. that's a good restaurant name. I don't right. know. Just get a hot dog. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Oh, we man. do not serve hot dogs. We, the, um, <laughs> oh, fuck. I was looking at this joint in the UK. It's called Cheat Mills. It's a dope name for a cute. restaurant. I like that. Yeah, that's Cheat cute. Mills. Anyway. Um, yeah, so we shake off the rust. <clears throat> I guess we're back. That was the warm up. You know what I mean? <clears throat> what are we talking about today, man? What's going on? Well, this is my episode. I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, you're excited. Mm-hmm. He's been excited. What I'm, like what I'm really excited about time. is the title. And we, this is like an old callback, like when we would do the the triple, the three threes, yeah, 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 yeah. kind of with power that. of threes, man. Yeah, yeah. So I'm calling this one from deities to diet to dynasty. Oh my god! An American so, breakfast cereal tale. Oh my god! Cereal as in food. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, I love it. Well, so what uh, you do is just you know settle in, you know, calm down. Yeah. All right, we 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 right. lock in, baby, lock in. So I decided uh, we are now a true crime podcast because oh, of what uh, I'm talking about. Um, today. We, we, didn't, we didn't meet about this. Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> is on uh, the air said that? Uh, this is all right. technically legal, but God damn, is this not a crime against we, humanity? We're a history comedy it podcast. Is okay. insane. It's insane. We're just going to mull, mull over the fact that you call this a true crime podcast? We're <laughs> <laughs> just going to roll over that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Let's go. Whatever. Let's no, go. no, no, no. Uh, so Locked in the early 1800s, in the Burned Over District of New York, that's what they called it. Uh, yeah, New York is, was constantly on fire back in the day. <laughs> well, no. You would think. Uh, it was, so it was the western <laughs> and central regions of New York State in the early 19th century were religious religious revivalists moved and became a part of the second great awakening. Uh, so this is like the great lakes area, right? Very rural. So it's not the good part. It got its name, the burned over district from someone claiming that there was no more fuel to burn. The fuel being non evangelicals and the burned being fully converted people. Oh, wow. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Oh, okay. yeah. I was always thinking, like, yeah, the shit just caught on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no. They rebuilt some shit. It's <laughs> somehow worse. That's deeper. Yeah. 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 Mm, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. Taking would, it all philosophical. I yeah. think I would prefer fire <laughs> yeah. to yeah. this. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, at this time, uh, Western New York was still the frontier, so established clergymen of quote unquote legitimate religions were scarce. Many of the people living there were self taught and were subject to folk religions. Innovative religions blossomed. 
They were all founded by lay people coming up with new and fun, exciting twists on Jesus. Isn't that fun? <laughs> what? <laughs> lay people. <laughs> lay people, baby. I mean, we're not talking... No. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is just a fucking dusty ass, illiterate dude being like, I got an idea. And then somehow people listen to him. Yeah, bro. William Miller was a prosperous farmer living there. In 1810, he left the Baptists and became a deist. Then, after fighting in the War of 1812, he read something in the Bible and became a Baptist again. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, flipper flopper. <laughs> At this point, all of his deist friends challenged his religious reawakening, so he dove deeper into the Bible and combined it with his knowledge of math. Mm. Oh, uh-uh. interesting. <laughs> and the inevitable result of this, which I'm sure you're already with me, is him, quote-unquote, discovering the second coming of Jesus. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that happened, right? It's the beginning of a mm-hmm. cult, it sounds yeah, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know anything. I think, I think I brought some, bought some flip-flops from that guy, pretty sure. Back, oh, yeah. Back, I, I bet they're good. Like 87, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Despite 1887. Despite hey. the urging <laughs> of his supporters, Miller never personally set an exact date for the expected second advent. However, that's and smart. Res- In response to their urgings, he did narrow the time period to sometime in the Jewish year beginning in the Gregorian year of 1843. If that sounds confusing, it fucking is. Where did all these years come from? (laughs) What's he? Hey, at least least he's smart enough to be like, hey, I don't really know when it's going to happen, but I feel it, though. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Domineus Requiem. I feel it, though. It's in the air, you know? It's right there. It's right there. Uh, he said, My principles in brief are that Jesus Christ will come again to this earth, cleanse, purify, and take possession of the same with all the saints sometime between March 21st, 1843 and March 21st, 1844. Uh, so March 21st uh, of 1844 passed without incident. Of course. And further discussion and study resulted in the brief adoption of a new date. April 18th, 1844. Now, this was based on the Cariate calendar. Uh, I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. As opposed to the Rabbinic calendar. Like the previous date, April 18th passed without Christ's return. Miller responded publicly, writing, I confess my error and acknowledge my disappointment, yet I still believe that the day of the Lord is near, even at the door. Mm. (laughs) Mm. <laughs> uh, luckily nowadays we have guys that are just holding fucking like sandwich boards mm. on like a popular downtown street you know what i mean and most people have ring cameras so i mean <laughs> if it's at the door it's like don't open the door man <laughs> nice 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 i like that so, i mean but for real though like you know <laughs> well at least now you have like the the pushback on shit like that like hey uh, are you bullshitting? Okay, you're bullshitting. Cool. Right. And so right. just like, oh, damn, for real? Is it really doing it? Is oh, it yeah. coming? The year 2000 is going to shut down the world? What? Yeah, exactly. Bro, Y2K was wild. Anyway, <laughs> we're showing our age with that one. Anyway. <laughs> Seriously. So in August of 1844, at a camp meeting in Exeter, New Hampshire, Samuel S. Snow presented a message that became known as the seventh month message or the true midnight cry. In a discussion based on on scriptural typology, Snow presented his conclusion, still based on the 2300-day prophecy in Daniel of 814, that Christ would return on the 10th day of the 7th month of the present year of 1844. Again, based largely on the calendar of the Cariate Jews, this date was determined to be October 22nd of 1844. I mean, I know the 1800s sucked, but geez, Louise, how many times did Jesus have to come back? <laughs> hey, bro. Every other month, dog. <laughs> Shit. So, following... It was their entertainment, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, these were the performers, my boy. Yeah. Like, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. They're going to the show to, to see the guy. Isn't that fucking crazy yeah. to think about? For you know? Real? I mean, yeah. it's true, on. though. Yeah. This is like, evangel. Uh, you it, had it, nothing. You had nothing. But this one dude talking wild, crazy shit, and it's like, bro, 
this dude is the truth, dog. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like going to see your favorite artist, bro. It's like, bro, we gotta go see the homie this week. <laughs> he gonna be wild, dog. <laughs> he gonna say some wild shit. And we gonna believe it. And that they <laughs> we gonna believe it. <laughs> we gonna believe it, bro. Like, that's so, gonna be our shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh god. So uh, I, uh just in case we didn't pick that up, Snow uh was a follower of Miller, right? And following what is now known as the Great Disappointment <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> if, uh, in 1944, most Millerites simply gave up their beliefs and fractured, joining Quakers, Shakers, and other belief systems. Some did not, and viewpoints and explanations proliferated. Did you say Millerites or Miller Lights? Millerites. Oh, man, I was about to get excited. <laughs> about to say. Well, so that's actually what <laughs> we're talking have. about today. So uh, the brewery Miller Light that actually came from this. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah man. Something that's good crazy. came of it. That's they were crazy. so disappointed that they made shitty beer. Every time you <laughs> Bro, take hold a on, sip hold of on, Miller pause. Light, you get a little bit of Jesus. Pause. Miller Light's all right. I like Miller Light. Yeah, it's not American good beer. beer. It's yeah. solid. It's not good, but I like it's it. It's American water, yeah. bro. Come on. Yeah. 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 That's so true. Yeah, that's it's so true. American water, dog. You know, you know what's uh very similar between uh sex on a boat and American beer? It's near water. Fucking close to water. <laughs> 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 oh man, dad jokes. Anyway. Uh, hmm. Sex on a boat. American beer. That's good shit. So Miller initially seems uh, to have thought that Christ's second coming was still going to take place, that the year of expectation was according to prophecy, but that there might be an error in Bible chronology, which was of human origin, that could throw the date of off somewhat and account for the discrepancy. That's a quote of his. Miller never, never gave up his belief in the second coming of Christ. Of course not. Estimates of Miller's followers, the Millerites, as I said earlier, vary between 50,000 and 500,000. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. That's insane. Miller's, For that time period, that's crazy. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's insane. You can't even talk to that many people in that time period. Goddamn right. Trump humpers. Yeah. Miller's <laughs> legacy includes the Advent Christian Church with 61,000 members and the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Oh, wow. Yeah. What a, what a tie-in yeah. there. Yeah. See, what that's a circle why I back. talked about old Miller. Mm. With over 19 million members. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. That's insane. I know. Talk this about, is a guy. Talk about take one and pass it down. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I really hate to compare him to Hitler, but it actually does make sense in the fact that he didn't believe in anything, then saw some shit in war, in battle, and then yeah. came back and was like, okay, everything's different now. Yeah. yeah. And then he decided to take some <sighs> loosely... A, like vaguely agreed upon belief system like mm -hmm. Christianity mm -hmm. and then dove way too fucking deep into it and was a really good public speaker and then there we go. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. seriously. Yeah. If, you, if you're a good orator, bro, like you can make people believe anything. Exactly, exactly. Yep, turn up that Riz. Yeah, <laughs> all Riz, no cap. <laughs> now, both of these denominations have a direct connection with the Millerites and the Great Disappointment of 1844. Mm -hmm. A number of individuals with ties to Millerites founded various short-lived groups. We have, <laughs> this, I just threw this in there because it was kind of funny, uh, Clorinda S. Minor, who led a group of seven to Palestine to prepare for Christ's second coming at a later date. So in 1844... A woman took seven other people to Palestine from just, America. Just to, boy. <laughs> Oof. Just to sit and wait. <laughs> Bro, yeah. What a culture shock for I him. I have no idea I, what happened to them, I, I but Lord. I don't think it was good. No, I'm not sure. Good. No, I, no, I, maybe I'm sure, they, I'm sure they didn't make it back to America. They may have started up a bakery. Who knows, you know? But. Also, the great disappointment. Like, there's two <laughs> things that I can get out of that. Band name, I call it. No, 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 wait. <laughs> So there's two things I get out of that. I get out of that, like, uh, the first thing is, um, holy shit, the world must have been fucking terrible if people were disappointed that they weren't gone now. Yeah. Number two. <laughs> I'm disappointed that I didn't Number die. two, dad, if you're listening, I understand why that was my nickname. <laughs> Ow. Jesus Christ. That hurt me. All right. <laughs> All right, then. We're going to unpack that off air. <laughs> So Miller died on December 20th, 1849. 
still convinced that the second coming was imminent. Of course. Yeah. You don't give up once you once you declare The second it, coming was M&M. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mom spaghetti? Mhm. Absolutely. Knees weak, arms are sweaty. Back mm-hmm. to Detroit, baby. Shit. Full circle to Detroit. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. 8 mile. Anyway. Yeah. Meanwhile, a man named <laughs> Sylvester Graham was born in uh, 1794 in Suffield, Connecticut, to a family with 17 children. That's not enough. You know, back then, that's, that's, that's your workforce back then. So you can keep popping them out. It's not we, enough. We need people to work the farm. We so. need more kids. So yeah. his father was 72 years old when Graham was born. What? He was still shooting straight. Man. Uh-huh. Damn. Pow, 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 pow. Well, that's so, like uh, Al Pacino. He's got, got a little chick pregnant yeah, recently. Know, He's like fucking 80 or something. Oh, fucking shit. weird, dude. Yeah. Ah! Anyway. And uh, surprise, surprise, his mother was mentally ill. You it's, don't say. <laughs> <laughs> 17 children in the 1800s? I think that Nobody's was a, saying. I think no. that was an unspoken there. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I just thought that was hilarious. The, my research just, it just said that. It was just a flat base statement. Just, yeah. just a statement. She, she had mental illness of some sort. You don't say. My God. So his father died when Graham was two surprisingly, and spent his childhood moving from one relative's home to another. One of his relatives ran a tavern where Graham was put to work. His experience with drunkenness there led him to hate alcohol his whole life and forswear drinking. Good for him. Which made him an exception amongst his peers at the time. He was often sick and missed a great deal of schooling. He worked as a farmhand, cleaner, and teacher. Which what I know he uh, taught um, people how to farmhand. I don't know, what? dude. I, what? And he, clean trash. It's too well, sick to go to school, so I guess I'll become a teacher. <laughs> like, come on. Well, well back what then, is, what is wrong with America? Bro, back then it's like it's like, hey, um, I'm a teacher now. So, and why can't I catch these breaks? So we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, Drew, you're fucking up. Look at this guy. You know. <laughs> He didn't did drink. He became a form hand and a teacher. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Now, he did all this before deciding on the ministry as an antidote for his poor health. He entered Amherst Academy in his late 20s to become a minister, as his father and grandfather had been. So for, he didn't go to any academy before he became a teacher. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> you don't need that. <laughs> those word. who can't do teach. Word. Have you never heard word. that? <laughs> word. Word. And those bro. who can't learn also teach. Also yeah, teach. Also teach. So. Jesus. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Just seeing the roots of the school system here in America. So he withdrew from school a year later, though, because of his histrionic manner. It was scorned by his fellow students. <laughs> He was such a jackass that they kicked him out of school. That's it's great. Basically, what he that. thought he was too good. He didn't have to even go to school to teach. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I've been a teacher for years. So, I don't need y'all. I mean, I'm, I'm on this shit, bitch. Yeah. So this expulsion <laughs> caused Graham a nervous breakdown. To recover, he moved to Little Compton, Rhode Island. There, he met and married Sarah Earl. <laughs> little little had, Compton. Little Bompton, boy. <laughs> who had, well, it's Rhode Island. Everything's small there. Uh, <laughs> Rhode Island this time. Yeah. <laughs> So his wife, uh, Sarah, nursed him back to health. He studied theology privately and in 1828 began working as an itinerant preacher at the Bound Brook Presbyterian Church in mm. Bound Brook, New Jersey. I get it. He taught himself he didn't need schooling. <laughs> right. Yeah. Graham's appointment and conversion to vegetarianism came as the 1829 cholera pandemic was breaking out in Europe. And Americans were terrified that it would reach the United States. Except a medical, uh, uh, the accepted medical opinion was that the best way to prevent contracting cholera was to eat plenty of meat, drink port wine, and avoid vegetables. Oh, yeah. What? Bro. Avoid Sound- vegetables? <laughs> so, sounds like a southern diet to me. That's right. <laughs> eat some meat, drink some damn liquor, and call uh, it a day, baby. People also believe that cholera was a plague, a punishment from God. Of course. It it all goes back to the big man, right? You know? I just <laughs> fucking this goddamn oh man. Okay. This these are our forefathers, everyone. Uh so the Philadelphia Temperance Society was led not by ministers, as most other temperance societies were, but by doctors who were primarily concerned with the health effects of consuming alcohol. Moving in that company, Graham may have met two of the fathers of American vegetarianism, William Metcalf 
an English minister who established vegetarian church in Philadelphia. It's a vegetarian, vegetarian church. church. A church, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, I was, I was processing that as you said it. I was like, <laughs> pushing all the boundaries. Vegetarian church, my boy. Yeah, and then William A. Alcott, a Philadelphia doctor who wrote extensively about vegetarianism, and wrote the first American vegetarian cookbook. I actually recognize that motherfucker's name when I'm doing this yeah, research. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, my God. Graham taught himself about uh, uh, physiology and apparently arrived at his own conclusion that meat was just as much of an expression of and spur to gluttony as alcohol was. So he's putting them in the Mm. same uh, Mm. satanic corner. So so meat meat and liquor are... Well, I'm that's fucked. Devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the devil. Yeah. That's that's the seventh uh, layer there. That's the seventh circle. <laughs> yeah, I was I was on my way to hell yesterday. Then <laughs> Jesus, yeah, yeah, ate, ate wings and drank a lot of beer. <laughs> me too. I, 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 uh, I bartended a uh, a wedding for extra money, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I did was yeah. drink alcohol. And then they were like, "Hey, go get some food." And I, by the time I got down there, there's nothing but like chicken nuggets and sliced steak left. <laughs> And Let's I was like, go, bro. All right. All right. <laughs> Snacking on a, a slab of beef. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so drinking a drink. And it was like cold butter on the steak because uh, it wasn't cooked. Like, yeah. Oh, you know? Yeah, and I was just like, like that's wow, a lot of butter. Wow, wow. Yum, 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 yum. Yes. <laughs> well, welcome to the USA. Seriously. Uh, I watched the movie Atlantis by uh, Di- bro, through, Banger. Through, the through, Disney joint? So, yeah. I love that movie. I Banger. watched that last, love that last night or the night before last. And one of my favorite actors of all time, Jim Varney, was uh, didn't re- remember that he's in it, but he's yeah. the cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's like the basic three food groups: uh, bacon, whiskey, and lard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is a perfect tie-in. I mean, seriously, everybody think about Cookie yeah. from uh, Atlantis. Yeah, because yeah. that is America yeah. at this time. Yeah. I swear to God. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was around the same time period too. If you've, if you have well, not seen Atlantis, really, yeah. go peep that, bro. It's great, yeah. I fell in love with that chick in that movie. So like many Sad. other <laughs> members of the temperance movement, <laughs> Graham viewed physical pleasure and especially sexual stimulation with suspicion as <laughs> things that excited lust leading to behavior that harmed individuals, families, and societies. Graham was strongly influenced by the Bible and Christian theology in his own idiosyncratic way. He believed that people should eat only plants like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and believed that that plague and illness were caused by living in ways that ignored ignored natural law. He urged people to remain calm and not allow worry or lust to shake them from living rightly. So don't have sex. Yes. Yeah. Eat plants. Don't have sex. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very exciting life. Man, I'm living such the opposite. (laughs) (laughs) Interestingly, uh, he perhaps was one of the first people to claim that stress caused disease. Which is is real. We have learned is actually true. That's really real. So the weird thing about this whole episode, which I'm thinking this is going to be a long one, um, was that they were right about two out of ten things, usually. (laughs) You know, (laughs) you got to throw darts at the dartboard to get a target, my boy. You know what I mean? Right. And the first dart is normally not in the middle. Yeah. You know? So from these uh, views, Graham created a theology and diet aimed at keeping individuals, families, and society pure and healthy, drinking pure water and eating a vegetarian diet, anchored by bread made at home from flour, coarsely ground at home, so that it remained wholesome and natural, containing no added spices or other, quote, stimulants. Uh, and that's that white people shit. No spices. Yeah, a yeah, rigorous yeah, wild, and a rigorous at least, food, boy. at least northern <laughs> <laughs> season your food. Boy. Y'all tripping? You know? uh, I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. In a rigorous lifestyle that included sleeping on hard beds and avoiding warm baths. Uh, the regimen has so been described as an early example of preventative medicine. Masochism, yes. Yes. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. Masochism as much. The emphasis on milling Masochism. and baking at home was part of his vision of America in which women remained at home and nursed their families into health and maintained them there, as his wife had done for him. Graham believed that adhering to such a diet would prevent people from having impure thoughts and in turn would stop masturbating. No, it's going to make it worse. Thought by Graham to be a catalyst <laughs> uh, for Catholic blindness Church, anyway. and early death. 
Yeah, I mean, if you keep up that regiment, you're going to have people walking around in the streets just jacking off. It's just like, <laughs> fuck it, I don't care anymore. Wait, I do want to... You see, if you deprive somebody of something, they're going to want it more. That's just the well, thing. That's so true. Human nature. Well, I do want to reiterate here. Graham, I'm pretty sure, was the guy that we've all heard. If you jerk off, you will go, go blind. blind. Yeah. <laughs> that's this motherfucker. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm a true testament. Harry still Palms? See. Who came up with that? I don't know. I actually looked into it to figure it out. It's just a weird thing that yeah. happened from all of this. This era, everyone thought. Yeah. So well, from the ages of like 12 to 15. Harry Palms? I should look like yeah. a fucking gorilla. You no, yeah. I hadn't heard that one. No, you get no. Harry Palms if you jack off. Yeah. You get Harry Palms and you go blind. Oh. Yeah. 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 So I should be like, ooh. Uh, 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 Tarzan, Jane, you know, uh, <laughs> nothing. I can't even swing from a vine. I mean, Chewbacca out this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! A, the crazy thing and is now the sexual side of our podcast. Uh, the, this shit is so hey, prevalent today. that a Swiss theorist, a dude from Switzerland, thought that semen was an essential oil and stimulus. <laughs> Kinda. That when <laughs> well, I mean, hey, it makes life. You know, proteins, uh, olive oil. <laughs> You know? Dude, I knew I was going to get interrupted a lot in this one. I just... Yeah, bro. This section alone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you throw sex out there, I'm, I'm on it. Let's go. <laughs> so that if you lost too much semen from the body, it would cause perceptible reduction in strength, memory, and reason. Blurred vision, oh. nervous disorders, blood in the urine, no. disturbance uh, of appetite. Oh, you need to get All yourself right. checked. All right, you had me. You had me. You had me at the beginning because you can, like, you know, build up your libido if you don't. You know, ejaculate too much. It strengthens you a little bit, but Ugh. all the rest of the shit, I'm, I'm, nah, I'm good, bro. You need to go to the motherfucking clinic, especially with the pee. <laughs> you wild blood out in here. your pee, yeah, did you, you wild in here, bro? If, if blood starts coming out, stop. No, yeah, stop now. <laughs> you done broke something. Go see your local uh, physician if you will. Maybe so, not back then. In his piece on what he called self pollution. <laughs> published in 1834, contributed to the masturbation scare in antebellum America. He believed youthful masturbation was dangerous. I'm sorry, it was as dangerous to children's health because of the immaturity of their reproductive organs. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, if I didn't jack off when I was a teenager, I'd have done killed somebody. I, that's <laughs> what I thought, too. Dude, <laughs> just I was just so, boiling up, boiling I was up. so full of angst and semen. Yeah. That mm-hmm. something had to come out. Yep. Yeah, bro. <laughs> and sometimes nothing came out, but it was all right because I yeah. felt it. <laughs> Just that random moment in, in science class. It's like, oh, shit. Uh-oh. Why? Why is this happening to my body? I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. Hey, Miss Hayes, I can get a bathroom pass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Anyway. So, as a skilled and fiery <laughs> preacher, um, Graham's per- a peculiar message combining... Patriotism, theology, diet, lifestyle, and messages already prev- uh, prevalent from the temperance movement captured the attention of the frightened public and outraged bakers and butchers, <laughs> 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 as well as the medical establishment. When the cholera epidemic reached New York in 1832, people who had followed the advice but appeared to thrive because everyone else thought to avoid cholera you eat a bunch of meat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but not Graham's folks. <laughs> um, and so his fame exploded. Many people claiming that his way changed their lives for the better. And it did because it got them to bathe, exercise, and eat anything other than red meat, salted por- pork fat, and cheese. And mostly to start fucking drinking water. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, you don't drink wine all day. Drink a little water. <laughs> You'll be all right. I mean, come on. So he basically rose to fame off common sense. Yes, a thousand percent. But like, yes. took his common sense into wash left your field. ass and drink water. Yeah, and maybe don't eat strictly meat. Yeah, yeah. And people felt better, so they thought he was some kind of just fucking deity. genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, he's a second coming. So Americanitis was a popular term coined by a foreigner. It described stomach pains, high blood pressure, nervousness, exhaustion, and hardening of blood vessels and organs. Americanitis, huh? Yeah. Still got that shit. Diabetes. (laughs) 
that basically, shit, yes. That shit yeah. is running rampant no, right now. I know. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, uh, it's the most ridiculous thing in the world. It, it, so it was mostly due to Americans eating almost exclusively fatty meats, way too much salt, working constantly, and eating too fast. Well, that hadn't changed. Damn. Not even a little bit. That changed Not even a little bit. At all. all. No. I know. I can attest to that shit. Yeah. I, I got in some random conversation about cancer uh, last night, and it was... It, uh, okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, but it was <laughs> it was like a 45-minute conversation that could have been summed up in treat yourself better, and you probably won't get cancer. <laughs> yeah. 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 Facts. Yeah. Uh, Graham published his first book in 1837, Treatise on Bread and Bread Making, which included a history of bread and describing how to make Graham bread. It was reprinted in 2012 by Andrews McKeel Publishing as a selection of its American Antiquarian Cookbook Collection. Its lectures in New York and Boston that year were thronged (laughs) because the Boston lectures were disrupted by riots. Um led by butchers and commercial bakers. Oh, Those word. are not the ones you want to fuck with. <laughs> they got a bunch of knives. They you don't, you don't, don't want to fuck knives. with bakers and butchers. <laughs> and they know their way around a slab of meat. Could you so. imagine? I mean, seriously, let's let's You're transport fucking with my money, bro. Back. Stop fucking with my money, <laughs> To where this, this re- religious zealot talking about just common sense practices. Just, hey, can we be healthy? so... Like it, they were so popular that so many people showed up, and it was threatening to the point where butchers and bakers started a riot. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> that sounds like some gangs of New York shit. Uh, straight Doesn't up. Doesn't it though? Straight, straight up. up. It's like, crazy. Like I mean, the main guy is the butcher. Yep. Like in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> so as his famous great red movie, by the way. Good God, it's a great yeah, fucking movie. Grahamism became a movement, and people inspired by his preaching began to develop and market Graham flour, Graham bread, and the Graham Cracker. Oh my God! <laughs> what about Teddy? This Graham? is where this was going. This is where this was going the whole time to Graham Crackers. I think you guys know. Oh my God! If you didn't know, this is absolutely the guy that started the Graham Cracker. Oh my God! Shouts out to the homie, bro. Yeah. That shit's banging. <laughs> <laughs> I'll smack a whole box of Graham Crackers. What right about now, Teddy huh? Grahams? Is it subsidiary? Same. Of- same. <laughs> <laughs> same. 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 No. I want to go to this religion. Crazy enough, he neither invented nor endorsed any specific product, nor did he receive any money from their sale. Graham influenced other Americans, including Horace Greeley, John Harvey, I'm sorry, and John Harvey Kellogg, founder of the Battle, oh. Creek, Battle Creek Sanitarium. Hmm. Kellogg. That's an interesting name. I wonder where mm-hmm. this is going. I don't know. I think we all know. But uh, (laughs) Graham's life had a sad end. By 1850, his health and status had declined to such a point where a neighbor described him as... (laughs) Eat a piece of meat! Infirm, (laughs) seated in a wheelbarrow, and clothed in a long dressing gown and bed ticking. Wheeled Uh. down the streets to the post office by a manservant. Oh. So just he's in a wheelbarrow, just chilling in a robe, <laughs> getting rolled down the street. My boy. So I just have like a what picture. The fuck? I just the have a picture of, some... of the Graham Cracker. <laughs> <laughs> See, first of all, you stupid for not getting money off that, because bro, that's my name, yeah. image, and likeness. Graham Graham Crackers. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Circle back to nil. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Come on, wow. Name, Holy image, shit. and likeness. Yeah. Come on now, gluten free. Amazing. That's insane, bro. Your name is tied to a well. My brain like just a staple in the my food brain industry. just went to some like psych patient in a gown in a wheelbarrow. Mm-hmm. Basically, what that was. That's what it was. It's like <laughs> that's what's happening. So by Graham, a manservant, <laughs> my boy has some other things going on. <laughs> yeah, apparently did. so. <laughs> Graham died of complications after receiving opium enemas. As, oh, as, oh. As, my. This shit is full of bangers. Yeah. This episode is full of bangers. I told bro. you, I'm so excited about this. Again, o- this is gonna be a long one. We can make enemas? a two part out of this if we want to, because goddamn, we, I it's mean, worth it. Just keep, keep, keep time, keep time. As long as it don't cool. stop before two thirty, we're good. Yeah. So, <laughs> opium in- boy, directed boy. by his doctor. <laughs> he died at the age bro. of fifty-seven. At home in Northampton, yeah. Massachusetts, his Good early death life. was the source of criticism and speculation. Historian Stephen uh, Nissenbaum, actually fifty-seven back then. That's you ancient. That's true. <laughs> Man, come on, 
has written that Graham died after violating his own strictures by taking liquor and meat in a last desperate attempt to recover his health. <laughs> it's like, fuck, so fuck this vegetable shit, bro. So, so his body had his body had lost all of its immunities to these things, and he's just like, yeah, fuck it, let's do yeah. it. So, so you, you you strictly take your body off of that shit for years and then go back to it to try to save your life? Yeah. Oh boy, what a smart dumbass, bro. What a smart dumbass. My goodness. I just love it so much. Uh, he's declining also, rapidly, and he's like, shit, maybe I was wrong. And just a bunch of meat, <laughs> alcohol, and an opium enema. And uh, yeah, see, that's, that's, that's probably <laughs> the key. Shouts out, to, uh, <laughs> shouts out to his doctor uh, uh, prescribing God. opium. <laughs> Enemas. Whoa. Also, is he still around? Because I might want one of those. <laughs> That's back when they, you know, just giving out cocaine to kids and shit back then. Oh, yeah. 100%. You know. yeah. <laughs> like you should. <laughs> so, Morphine um, tablets for uh, common cold yeah. type shit. Back anyway. to Miller's tale. The Seventh day Adventists that formed after the Great Disappointment believed that the Second Coming did happen in 1844, but in heaven. What? Oh. What? Wait, what? <laughs> Loophole. Oh. He walked through a door. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. What does that even mean for real? <laughs> you though? know, like, like the second coming is him going to his living room in heaven. Like, uh, like what? Uh, that's what? crazy. Yeah. So he foreseen it, or it could get a little sexual in the skies. Oh, nice. nice he had nice. a little. Yeah, yeah. This next comment, <laughs> or maybe not at all. I like it. <laughs> Oh, so they're just basically getting blue balled the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My goodness, oh, that yeah. sucks. So a large group of these people ended up in Michigan, cereal. where a man named Jar- John Harvey Kellogg came into play. John Harvey Kellogg was born in Tyrone, Michigan, on February 26th of 1852, <laughs> <laughs> to John Preston Kellogg and his second wife, Ann Jeanette Stanley. <laughs> John and his family moved to Michigan in 1834, and after his first wife's death and his remarriage to a farm in Tyrone Township, in addition to six children from his first <laughs> marriage. We can't get over the Tyrone, bro. <laughs> he just went over that joint. Tyrone is a city? This motherfucker just got out of prison. What the fuck you naming the city for? Shout, shout out to my uncle Tyrone. Also, uh, Erica Badu called Tyrone. Great song. <laughs> Um, what? Yeah. Shout out to Tyrone, Michigan, bro, if y'all listening. So John Preston <laughs> Kellogg had 11 children with his second wife, including John Harvey and his younger brother, Will Keith Kellogg. So we've got another 17er. Mm. <laughs> another 17er, my boy. <laughs> Weird correlation. Yeah. John Preston Kellogg became a member of several revivalist movements, including the Baptists, the Congregationalists mm. Church, and finally, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He was one of four adherents who pledged substantial sums to convince the Seventh-day Adventist Ellen G. White and her husband, James Springer White, to relocate to Battle Creek, Michigan. With their publishing business in 1855, Ellen White was is important because as a child, she was hit in the face with a very large rock. Okay. All right. Causing a nasal deformity, epileptic seizures, and hallucinations of God. Hell, so she yeah. Was t- she was touched by an angel. So, hey. <laughs> and yeah. an angel's a big-ass rock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> we are an angel. <laughs> from God. <laughs> Sheesh. My God. <laughs> so these hallucinations, the Adventists took this as very real. And they followed her thousands of visions closely. I mean, I'm sure she took it pretty real, too, right to the face. Thousands of visions. Uh-uh. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So this, this is like Salem Witch Trial shit, bro. She would like, seize up, and they would listen closely. Yeah. <laughs> like, I see it. We've got this medicine that can stop her. No, 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 no. Actually, can you turn we her on? We need our religious doctrine. Can you turn her on her side, please, so she doesn't fucking die? <laughs> She's about to bite her tongue off. Wait, yeah, listen. Can you put a belt in her mouth or something? Like, um, Can we save her life? Can't maybe? hear a prophecy with the belt. Yeah, Sorry. True that, true that, true that. <laughs> So one of her visions included the perfect diet that involved graham crackers. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Hell yeah, boy. Hey, legit, bro. I'm thinking about going on a graham cracker diet. <laughs> um, high sugar intake. 
You know what I'm saying? Well, see, back then they had zero sugar at all. No, it was, not it was just like cardboard. Bland. It was literally cardboard. Yeah. yeah, yeah hella yeah, bland. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rice cakes. The, the graham crackers yeah. that we know have a shitload of enriched flour, oh, honey, yeah. and a lot of artificial so, sweeteners. So uh, but, completely against his whole situation. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. It is, <laughs> a, what it we is have a, today. a direct flip of, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, wait, sugar is addictive. Um <laughs> Let's put that shit in put here. Put a bunch of that shit in there. Yeah, yeah. Got it. all of it. Let's like, get that in there, bro. Sugar's like cocaine. Come on. Wait, can we put cocaine in there? No, no. Not, nope. not anymore. Oh, okay. we're okay. past the thirties. Okay, got sorry. it. Got it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shots on Coca Cola. I was just about to say. I was just about to say. <laughs> so Kellogg's dad also persuaded a Seventh Day Adventist couple, Daniel uh, Cress and Loretta, to become doctors at a Michigan hospital where they, where he had studied, they were early founders of what became Washington Adventist hospital in 1856. The Kellogg family moved to battle Creek to be near other members of their denomination where, uh, John Preston Kellogg established a broom factory. The Kelloggs believed that the second coming of Christ was imminent and that formal education of their children was therefore unnecessary. <laughs> So uh, so are these uh, people that are still Seventh Day Adventists that are still out here, did they still think that it's just like right around the corner every I guess. day? I honestly don't know. For for the most part, it's coming. They just don't know when. Oh kinda okay. Like, okay. Oh, okay. kind of like that good that good moment where you're drunk enough. It's coming, you just know when. Yeah. You know? You feel me? So yeah, neat. So I like, feel you. Yeah. so like, <laughs> I pick up on that. Were you, were you drunk yeah. enough, but not too drunk? Yeah. <laughs> so it like every other religion, but you just have to name your religion after that feeling. Yeah. Right, okay. Right. Cool. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, this is this is an, this is an episode. My yeah. Boy. Thank you. Thank you. This is an episode. Uh, to paint more coronations. Uh, sorry, correlations. I like uh, coronations. I'm stuck in this fucking religious bullshit. Originally, as a sickly child, John Harvey Kellogg attended Battle Creek Public Schools only briefly, from ages 9 to 11. He left school to work sorting brooms in his father's broom factory. Nonetheless, he read voraciously and acquired a broad but largely self-taught education. At age 12, John Harvey Kellogg was offered to work by the Whites. Like hey. other races. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, like Ellen White, the, the lady with the seizures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the seizure lady. Yeah, the seizure By lady. By the Whites. <laughs> no. Okay, so is the rest of the world. So <laughs> what, are we, what are we doing? <laughs> and your point is? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry, no. Those By whites. the ghost of Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> he became one of their protégés, rising from errand boy to printers. Uh, in the, <laughs> the line here is printer's devil. I'm not exactly sure what that means, mm -hmm. but I think it means that like he would print, like put what she was saying into print and run it around mm -hmm. and like uh. Uh, uh, like disseminate it. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So he basically became kind of a preacher in his own right. Yeah, I think that's what that means. It's like the, the like the British is coming guy. No. It's like yeah. run, run through the neighborhood. <laughs> hey, bro, yeah. it's that new shit. Yeah. <laughs> and eventually he was even doing like proofreading and editorial work. He helped to... Uh, With no education. Uh, no education at all. <laughs> but, but smart as hell, though. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> he helped to set articles for health or how to live. And the health reformer becoming familiar with Ellen G. White's theories of health and beginning to follow recommendations such as vegetarian a, a vegetarian diet. Ellen White described her husband's relationship with John Harvey Kellogg as closer than that with his own children. Mm. Huh. Odd. Very loving that's father. A, and it gets mm. more odd a little later. Yeah, that's a, mm. Mm. Interesting. So uh, Kellogg hoped to become a teacher and at age 16 taught a district school in oh, Hastings, Michigan. 16? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. How, what, 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 what ages was he doing this other shit? <laughs> what is he's like 13 <laughs> fucking years old? Well, again, again, somebody dying at 57 is ancient because motherfuckers at 16 uh, were doing shit like this. Uh, he's right. Then. He's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? No. Like owning general stores and shit, my boy. Like, uh, <laughs> it's fucking insane. So by age 20, he had enrolled in a teacher's training course offered by Michigan State Normal School. <laughs> Normal School, huh? Now, what's, what's the other shit? Now known as Michigan State University. 
<laughs> and, uh, oh my god. Ooh man. <laughs> Normal school. Normal school, my boy. Fuck me. From there, he got convinced to enjoy uh, join a six month tr- medical course at oh. Russell Trails Hygio Therapeutic College in Florence Township, New Jersey. They're just making up shit now. <laughs> yep, They're making up shit. And I thought you make them up. I also also was really hoping for like six month Adventist. (laughs) Not not (laughs) just really out here. So their goal overall is to develop a group of trained doctors for the Adventist inspired Western Health Reform Institute in Brattle Creek. Under the White's patronage, uh, John Harvey Kellogg went on to attend medical school at the University of Michigan and the Bellevue Hospital Medical College in New York City. He graduated in 1875 with a medical degree. In October of 1876, Kellogg became a director of the Western Health Reform Institute. In 1877, he renamed it the Battle Creek Medical Surgeon Sanitarium, cleverly coining the term sanitarium to suggest both hospital care and the importance of sanitation and personal health. Mm -hmm. It it became a psych ward uh, later on. (laughs) Basically, sanitarium. But think about the fact that he's the first person to call something a sanitarium because nobody was washing their ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, come over here for a yeah. few days, wash your ass. Yes. Uh, you and know, we're about relax to get, for a minute. We're about to get really deep in the ass part. Yeah. Um, just, just Where were the know. moors uh, pause? the entire time? Like, we need the moors back. Phrasing, again. my dude. You know? No, no, phrasing intentional here. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting serious. deep in the ass, my boy. That's what you just said. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. Well, here we go. So the sanitarium was <laughs> again, operated. The sexual side of the podcast. <laughs> the sanitarium was operated based on the church's health principles. Adventists believed in promoting a vegetarian diet. Abstinence from alcohol and tobacco, and a regiment of exercise, all of which Kellogg followed. He's remembered as an advocate of vegetarianism and wrote in favor of it, even after leaving the Adventist church. His dietary advice in the late 19th century discouraged meat eating, but not emphatically so. His development of a bland diet was driven in part by the Adventist goal of reducing sexual stimulation. Mm. Keep it boring. All of this always goes back to boring food, no sex. Yeah. It's really weird, but that's yeah. what they thought. I hate that life. But the thing is, is that we were all behaving so badly, like just drinking booze, just eating meat yeah, that was stored improperly. Mm-hmm. And so everybody yeah. hurt all yeah. the time. Taco pudding everywhere. Yeah, bro. Exactly. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Like it's... Like that. It was, um, I was reading this thing the other day. It was like, you know, all these people that built America... Like the construction workers and all that shit back in the day, like their lunch break consists of like two or three pints, yeah, and oh, then yeah. like go back to work, yeah, because it was like a meal. You're like mildly drink. drunk all the time, yeah, bro. Yeah. This is, so half the shit that's built I in know America, how that feels. motherfuckers Same. were lit <laughs> building bridges and shit, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, that's insane to think about. So anyway. at this point, no one had shit solid in probably a decade. <laughs> At and, least. Yeah, and someone's coming around yeah. being like, hey, eat better, yeah, exercise, some, and drink water. A little bit of, what they call pissing some, out the ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> ass piss, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So Kellogg was Ooh. essentially a strong proponent of nuts, uh, which he believed would <laughs> save too. humanity in the face of decreasing food supplies. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, never mind. <laughs> Although mainly he's renowned these days for his development of cornflakes. Oh my God! It's the cereal did guy. He, this, we all did knew. John Harvey Kellogg. Kellogg? Is that the dude? Yeah, that's Kellogg. That's Kellogg. Like, yeah, fucking the Kellogg. They're great looking <laughs> ass boy. Okay. Fucking Lee oh, Harvey Kellogg. Heard mm-hmm. Lee Harvey. <laughs> his name was John Harvey, but uh, every time he says yeah, John Harvey, I think of Lee Harvey. <laughs> By the way, every uh, time. I'm thinking about JFK every time he says his fucking name. Anyway. Here's, here's something I had to throw in just because I thought it was hilarious. Uh, Kellogg also invented a process for making peanut butter. Uh-oh. What? Don't you be speaking them evils on, on me, now. Ricky Bobby. Hold on now. Mm-mm. Hold on now. No, They're going to no. throw peanut butter on this guy. No. <laughs> no. 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 George that, Washington that, Carver, that, motherfucker. That belongs to the black community. Uh, the black delegation uh, denies these claims. No, I did have a dude the other Fuck day at work shit. try to argue with me. That George Washington Carver invented the peanut. Oh, he wilding for that one. 
And I was like, wait, 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 wait. He did peanut that, right? butter. Peanut butter? <laughs> and he Bro. was like, no, 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 the peanut. And I was like, uh, no, buddy. I don't Nobody. think that's <laughs> You hear this uh, the theory of- He uh, ground it down into something that we can put on sandwiches. Yeah. He just kept <laughs> mixing it. was like, fuck this sh- fucking heard little this, uh, nut. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, it's getting creamy. <laughs> Look at that. I heard this theory the other day where uh, this comedian was like, man, shout out to Josh, George Washington Carver, bro, because I think he's he's plotting against the white people, bro. <laughs> Who's got peanut allergies? You know, black, <laughs> black person with peanut allergies? Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, he even made that. the most delicious. Playing the long the game, baby. <laughs> the most delicious <laughs> substance. <laughs> And white people are the only ones allergic to this shit. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Bro, I cry oh. laughing at that shit, bro. Oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> it's funny. Said, Name a black person that's allergic to peanuts. Yeah. George Washington Carver was a genius. <laughs> that I was like that the so end much. of the fucking joke. I was like, bro, you wild for that. You wow for that. Yeah, yeah, but it's great. So I've decided in this moment, we are going to make this a two-parter. Yeah, we yeah. probably should. Yeah, yeah. It's so, thick. It's thick. Everybody stay tuned. Stay in tuned. next food. Stay, stand, stand, stand tuned. Everybody stand tuned. Second for next part of this is going to be tone. very legible. <laughs> so, as far as we got a recap, uh, these motherfuckers crazy and they made cereal and graham crackers. <laughs> that is it. That's, yeah. that's the ketchup. Yeah. 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 No, no ketchup. No ketchup. Just peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> um, yeah, stay tuned for next week, man. This is a, this is an episode, my boy. We got to split this bitch up. Yep. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. My boy is really out here. There's more to come. He, and, uh, he dove deep into, into the into the depths of the knowledge. Anyway, uh, well, yeah. Stay tuned for episode two on the deities, diets, and dynasties. Boom. Poof. Hey. Off the dome, I got that, Damn, bro. I didn't remember that. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Whoa, whoa. Um, yeah, man. Um, Papa got a brand new bag this morning, so. <laughs> hey, calm <laughs> down. <laughs> calm down. I uh, we're back in the 1830s. Hey. All, 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 all righty then. Mm. Well, um, yeah, man, let's say stay tuned. Uh, we love y'all out there. You know, uh, stay motivated through this uh, season change. You know, um, I'm just Hammonds. I'm saying love, live life because it's worth living, y'all. I'm Drew Shillnut. And I'm saying something about some words and such. Live your life and such, and do good stuff. Cool. Grant Bramlett here. Um, If you understood that eating an appropriate amount of a whole bunch of different stuff makes you good and healthy, maybe sprinkle some water in there every now and again. A little bit of water. Just just every now and again. Yeah, right. Always, always liked you. If... uh, (laughs) You think that masturbation or sex of any kind or just eating salted pork fat all the time is good for you. Never loved you. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Salty pork. Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, yeah. This has been a podcast called Friends, Facts, and Fiction. And we out. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next installment. Find us on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date on all things friends, facts, and fiction. Our Instagram handle is friends underscore facts underscore fiction. As always, please reach out to us. You can send any of your questions, praise, and fact checking to friends period facts period fiction at gmail.com. It's important to us to only propagate the truth, and we'll correct any errors we may have made. Your hosts and researchers are... Justin Hammonds, Grant Bramlett, and Drew Shelnut. Our episodes are produced by Grant Bramlett. Additional producership provided by Grace Higgs. Our recording engineer is Grant Bramlett. Lighting design is provided by Justin Hammond. This has been a production of Friends, Facts, and Fiction. Yes. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it right now. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Here we go. Right. Shake it off. Shake it off. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. <clears throat>